Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks. Got an awesome vise today. This is I'm super, super excited about. This is the first reed vise that I've restored. And so we're gonna get cracking on this. This is a 104 and a half R made out of Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm gonna show you why this vise is special and I'm gonna show you with as many vices as I have in the shop here, um, why I think this is probably the best vice that I own. Look at the jaws. Just first of all, just let's just look at the jaws for a second. Look at how absolutely tight those jaws get in the precision of those jaws. There's very little wear on this vice. Now the jaws are absolutely smooth very little wear or damage on these jaws and you'll see more as we clean it up on the back notice the precision that the slide has in the housing in the vice housing so again very very little gap very precise I mean, that is a heavy duty, well-built vise. First things first, let's get her apart. Uh, this is a split nut, so I'll have to get that off to be able to pull this lead screw out. There you go. And that's how it goes together, just exactly like that. Look how this was machined. So I'll put that in and clean that up. Way overbuilt. This thing is just massively overbuilt.
Okay guys, so this is my extension plate. All I've done is obviously you saw me on video, <clears throat> traced out the outline here and then used the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter is a uh, 30 XP uh, hypertherm, I believe is the model number. Um, so it's the smallest one I think they make. But as you can see, this is 3 8 inch plate, so almost half inch. And um, you can see how well it cuts. Just does a really beautiful job. So we're gonna use the belt grinder and get some of this, this um, slag off of here. So this is my extension plate. So the plate will mount somewhere around like that. And the vise We'll go like that. I've got two bolts that'll go in the back that'll hold that thing a little more secure. So two bolts here and two bolts in the very back, and then that'll extend it. I'm gonna say uh, probably around four inches. So now I'll drill the holes. Okay, now that we've got the plate cut, we've ground the edges, I've cleaned it of all oil and grease, and now I've spray painted it um, just with a can spray paint. The paint is still a little soft, so I'm gonna go careful here. So now this bolt pattern will match up with this. Well guys, we finished it. We got it done. It's an awesome vise. I, this is my best vise. This is the one I'm, I mean, I get excited about every vise, don't get me wrong, but this vise is extra, extra special. I've never had a read. This is my first and I'm not disappointed in any way at all. The quality and the craftsmanship of this vise surpasses any of the vices that I own and I have quite a few. So uh, let's talk a little bit about this. It's a read. 104 and a half R. It's made in uh, by the Reed Manufacturing Company, made in Erie, Pennsylvania, United States of America, of course, and it's got a patent number there. I did buy this in Pennsylvania, as a matter of fact. I live in Indiana, um, southwest Indiana. So uh, my daughter and son in law are up in New Jersey, and so this happened to come uh, up for sale on Craigslist, $40. The guy was super nice, um, sold it to me, actually held it for me. There was uh, other people trying to get it but I think I was the first uh, person that called. So anyways, uh, very much appreciate that. And uh, so now this vise um, looks as good as it functions now. Super, super smooth, very precise. Uh, so let's talk about a few things. I made an extension plate. The extension plate extends this vise out by three inches. It does a couple things. One, it allows me to bolt it to my bench without really having to modify the bench in any way. Um, and just because of the way my bench is made, I would have had to do a little bit of modification, or I would have had to set the, the vise back on the bench, and I really didn't want to do that. Um, it allows me to be able to take some of my work and put it in the vise and kind of sit out a little bit away from the bench and be able to take a, uh, you know, something like a file and, and, and file on my work or do whatever it is I need to do with my work. In this case, um, the main thing I thought about for this vise was when I'm making a knife and, um, and I need to do some fine detail file work. Um, it really helps with that. And it's a smooth jaw vise. So not only are the jaws super precise as far as closing, there's very little gap. Um, it, you could probably put a, a hair in this vise and actually clamp it down, believe it or not. It's that precise. Uh, but being it smooth, it won't mar my work. And that's very important if it had um, 
uh, non-smooth jaws, you know, it'll grip better, obviously, but it'll also um, indent on my work, and I can't have that, not on something like a knife. Um, so anyways, that's one of the, the beauties of this. Um, so I mentioned the four inch, uh, four and a half inch jaws, four inch, four and a half inch wide. The opening, the vise will open seven inches, right at seven inches, um, before the slide body goes into the body of the vise. Um, so that's important. Um, the paint. So a lot of guys are probably looking at the paint going, oh my gosh, what did he do to the vise? Uh, I mixed, you know, I like color. Again, my vices are kind of my shop jewelry. Uh, everything else is kind of not got a lot of color. And so I, I kind of like to have a little bit of color in the, in the shop. And, you know, I do take care of my vices. I don't um, abuse them um, or mistreat them in any way. I try to take good care of them. And so a paint job kind of protects them, but it also gives me some aesthetic um, uh pleasure i guess it looks good to the eye uh, this in this in this case this is a mixture of burgundy and yellow and it come out and i'll call this butterscotch because that's what it looks like to me it looks like butterscotch but it's an automotive paint i used an epoxy primer and an automotive paint the same thing i've been doing with most of my vices if you've watched any of my other videos it's um it's relatively cheap paint it's not a high-end paint, but it is an automotive paint, and I get it really cheap. This is the stuff that they've mixed, and they mix too much, or it's not the right color, or whatever. So I get it uh, really, really cheap at the automotive um, paint store. Okay, guys, let's talk for a second about the handle. So all I did with the handle is I just put it on the wood stove, and I heated it up, and um, you know got it at a nice warm temperature, and then I put a boiled linseed oil finish on it. The handle's in excellent condition. I had to do nothing with the handle other than clean it up a little bit. It's got just, I think, a beautiful patina on it. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, it's not gouged, dinged. It's, I mean, the, the balls on the ends are perfect. It's not all mushroomed out where the, where the vice handle has been slamming against it for years and years. The, I, I found a date stamp on this vice. I believe it's um, date stamped 1942. I found a 42 on the side. I, that's probably about when this was made, I'm guessing. And so that date stamp seems right to me, 1942. It did not have a month, so it, it could be some other number, but it did look like it was probably a date stamp to me. Um, the quality is really, really amazing, and the condition of the vice for being around 78 years old is pretty amazing as well. Um, so I'll bring you in for a close net close-up view now and uh, just kind of run you around the vise on the jaws here I did try to tape off exactly where the hardened jaws meet the um, softer jaw body now um, my understanding is Reed actually forged welded these onto the vise um, jaw body uh, I don't know that process how they did that um, pretty amazing that they could do something like that, but um, you can see that the jaws, the hardened jaws, actually keyed into the softer jaws, and they didn't key in exactly the same way. So guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. I'll do my best to uh, read your comments and maybe even respond when I get the time. Anyways, guys, thanks again for watching. Until the next video, I'm Chris with M7 Metalworks.